and a bro fist to you all. It is 1600 hours here in the UK on a Friday afternoon. And that means two things. One, drama time has arrived and it is going to be a good one. We have a marriage falling apart because of gaming. Mm. And on top of that, it is three hours until the tournament of death. The first inaugural tournament of death taking place in the PG community. Everybody has had one week to prepare a character on classic hardcore doesn't matter when you die it's what you had been the next three hours in order to enter the tournament of death where duels to the death will take place and by the end of it there will be one single remaining living soul of the 39 that entered into our tournament of death and it has been a trial and tribulations with many deaths along the way and sadly, that does include my own. My character fell to the floor today. It lasted the entire week up until the day of the tournament, and which is when it did fall. Unfortunately, due to circumstance, stupidity, and bowing down to the wills of my chat, I will hold them responsible as they definitely had some involvement, yet they are not completely to blame by any means. But it is the nature of the beast. But no matter. Some have been strong. Some have re-rolled no more than five times. And are still up there ready to go. And it is the first inaugural one. We will hold some sort of annual tournament. In various games. For the people who want to take part in it. Because it has gone super super well. I'm super happy with it. I will pre-warn anybody listening to this on audio. And our live show is that at some point. There will be a brief interruption to drama time. As we have also built a brand new PC. In preparation for Starfield. For one of our viewers. And I have to dispatch it. The delivery people are coming within the hour. Uh, it's unfortunate timing. But it is what it is. So just be prepared for that to happen. It will be a thing. Needless to say. If you're tuning in right now. It's because you're here for some tales to listen to, whether it be live or in your car or at home or while you're doing whatever. Uh, so let's do this one. Let's do this. Warcrack, as it was classically known all those years ago and still to some, is called Warcrack. It is the addictiveness that drives you. And I put it in the wrong box because I'm bad at my job, but that is the way it's going to be. And I can't spell now. Okay. I, the, clearly, I'm shambled because of the disaster we suffered today, but that's okay. And our names today will be Mezogis, taken from our wonderful website supporters, and Alex. These will be our wonderful superstars for today. Okay. Let's get ready to rumble. Howdy, preach! <laughs> I come to you from a little-known place that appears on Drama Time. I am from Utah in the U.S. of A. Utah. What's Utah famous for? I don't know. I always think potatoes, but I think that's Idaho. What is Utah famous for? Utah is famous for Mormons. Okay. Well, there it is. <laughs> Utah is famous for number one. Mormons. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Come see our Mormons. All right. <laughs> I guess. I have loved, I've been a long time lurker and listening to Drama Time for many, many years. I wanted to submit to you a story, but always put it off. But here I am. Yes. Get your stories into us. You send them to drama at preachgaming.com. We would love to share your stories. Everybody has one to tell. If you dealt with online people, you have a story to tell. There have been plenty of good times to share a story, but I'm admittedly a serial procrastinator to the point where my sister submitted a story and had it read, more on that later, and rather than instantly finishing this story and submitting it, I just didn't do it. <laughs> well, the time has come. I have finally managed to put words to document on account of having a bit of free time at work. I hope you and, you and your audience enjoy a little story about my steps into WoW. Okay. Let me take you back in time, ladies and gentlemen, to October 2003. I had just turned 11 years... Oh my god, you're a Zoomer. 11 years old. <clears throat> and had moved to a new town. <clears throat> I really wanted to make friends and was lucky enough to find a couple of kids in the same nerd stuff that I was into. One day, they started talking about a game called StarCraft. 
and that it also had another game by the same company called Warcraft. I had heard of these games, read about them in magazines, but I had never played. No, at this point, my experience with Blizzard games was Diablo 2. My dad had gotten me into it when we played all the time. An RTS sounded really boring to me compared to the magical fantasy world of Diablo, but they kept talking about controlling armies of humans, defending their home from marauding orcs. Something changed in me. Now, it could be that Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers was out the year before, and Return of the King was right around the corner, but the idea of controlling an army of smorks, it just sounded so fucking cool. So, with the $20 I had, I traveled to a game store and I purchased myself Warcraft 2 Battle Chest just to dip my toes in, and I was hooked. But the word around the playground amongst the cool kids was that there was a newer game, a better game, and only the paws played Warcraft 2. The cool kids were playing Warcraft 3. So... I got to saving. I mowed so many lawns until I could afford it. I bought myself a copy, played through the campaign, and absolutely fell in love with the story. I remember spending all my free time at the campaign playing custom maps like Dark Deeds, Murder at the Mansion. Not Dota, though. That shit is for sweaty geeks, and I wasn't a geek. Uh Uh-huh. But then... Around the swings, I heard more stories. Did you know? Blizzard is making an MMO set in the Warcraft universe. In the MMO, you can be one of the characters from Warcraft 3. You could be your own hero unit. You could live in Azeroth. You could experience it from a new perspective. It sounded perfect sounded so good i had to see it i had to be a part of it but we had to wait autumn 2004 i got into the world of warcraft open beta and as a huge fan of warcraft 3 i made myself of course the one true king a human paladin named it after my dad's dungeons and dragons paladin that i grew up on with stories of deeds i logged in I was greeted by the triumphant swelling of music as the narrator recounted the state of Stormwind and I instantly fell in love with the music of Elwyn Forest. A hauntingly serene melody which hints of melancholy and mystery and candles. To this day, to this very, very day, hearing Elwyn Forest's theme brings me back to the first time I logged in. I will admit, when I walk across the bridge into Stormwind, it also takes me back to the first time I ever played Warcraft. I love the intro into Stormwind. Of course, the game was filled and riddled with heinous lag and long queue times, but who cares? I was so in love. I was home. All too soon, the beta was over. I had only hit level 12, and the world of Azeroth was closed once again. There was a sad truth, you know. I was still 11 years of age. There were not enough lawns to mow in the whole world to allow me to afford to play World of Warcraft. And even if I had the money, I lived in Utah. I'm pretty sure Utah only got eight copies of World of Warcraft at our game store on launch. And it sold out almost immediately. No matter where I went. I could not find a copy, even if I had the money. Oh, disaster. Oh, God. Total disaster. The power of Utah (laughs) strikes again. How many people have a PC in Utah? Like, eight people? Like, what the fuck are we going to send to Utah? Months went by. Months. And I was forced to watch others explore and enjoy the world I so craved to be a part of. I daydream of Elwyn Forest and of maybe one day fighting the scourge itself in the Plaguelands. I was there to avenge Lordaeron and what happened. Every few weeks, I would call our local stores. Excuse me, do you have World of Warcraft on your shelves? 
No. No, we don't. The seasons changed and the clock kept ticking. Summer 2005. School had finished and I was desperate. So very desperate to get to Azeroth. I went back to the lawns. I did as many chores as I could and a month and a half later, I raised $45. Barely half of what I needed plus the $15 to actually support the sub fee. Wow, was $90 when it came out? Is that true? I don't remember. $90? Was it? Barely half. No? Yeah, I thought it was like 40. What is it? Like $40 when it came out? $45, barely half what I needed. Okay. Maybe the memory's a bit off. <clears throat> but I had another way out, my friends. Oh, yes. In the deep dark of my parents' basement, I formed a plan. You see, my sister's birthday was coming. My sister always got money, straight cash, straight green cheddar from our aunts and grandparents. All I needed to do was convince her that she should spend that money on World of Warcraft. So I began telling her tales. I told her of an amazing world where beautiful elves and dwarves would fight against the mighty undead and giant muscular orcs, druids that could turn into animals, hunters who could call upon a plethora of animals to aid them in combat. It convinced her. The idea of the animals, that was the play. That's right, it was me. A while back, you covered a story of a girl whose friend's boyfriend sucked and how that friend stole the guild bank. It was from season 9, episode 36, My Best Friend's Boyfriend. And in the prelude of that story, she talked about how her brother scammed her into going halfies, halfsies on World of Warcraft. That is me. I am that brother. I am the scammer. As I recall, she made, of course, a night elf hunter. But due to the events to unfold, she was not able to level that hunter past around level 15, even after I had my own account. Now, all in all, I think things worked out for her. Something she did not mention in her stories that she spent her teenage years as a moderately successful World of Warcraft music video editor on YouTube. She got 5,000 subscribers at the height of her popularity and regularly pulling in thousands of views on her videos. Her most popular video she ever made all the way back then got 183,000 views. But let me take you back to our tales of Azeroth. With WoW actually in my hands and in my home, I rushed and spent the rest of the day installing it to my PC and updating the game. The following day, I managed to log in. I selected a PvP server due to hearing how fucking awesome it was going to be to battle real people, to really immerse me into the war part of Warcraft. My US server, and I made a human paladin from the beta. After more than six months after launch, I was finally there, and patch 1.6 had dropped. Now, since I played Diablo with my father, I wanted to get him involved as well. Get a recouping, a bonding experience. Have someone to play with. And who better than your own father? So I had to plan something new. I'm still in Elven Forest when a message comes into my ear that dishes need to be done. I had awaited this moment. I knew I had dishes to do that day. So the moment it happened, <clears throat> hey, dad, mom's making me do dishes, grumpy face. Can you just take over for me so I don't die? I've done most of the things anyway. Now, as much as he wasn't doing anything of interest at the time, he was still at heart a gamer. He took control of my level 10 paladin and half an hour later when I came back, he was in. He was hooked. 
It was like I was injecting heroin straight into his veins. I didn't know it then, but this innocent little act would send dominoes crashing down. Not the least of which was the fact that the paladin I had been playing would not be mine for much longer. <laughs> oh no, dad just takes your character. <laughs> this is mine now. Hey, hey, you came out of my balls. This is mine now. Do you understand? Okay, no matter what you do, son. No matter what you do, remember where you started. Okay, right here. Which means I can take all your stuff. It is mine. In the meantime, my old man rolled up a night elf hunter and took to wow like a fish to water. He spent his days at work looking up class guides and forums while his nights were spent camping to tame Broken Tooth. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I cleaned up questing in Elwyn Forest and helped the downtrodden people of Westfall fend off the bandits that had been invading their lands. Eventually, I picked up one of the most iconic quests in all of Classic WoW, the level 20 paladin quest for Verigan's Fist. I took to chat, looking for a group, people who would join me, comrades, to adventure with me in conquering these shadowy dungeons and forging the mighty hammer. That is when I received a message in the pink from another paladin, Mesogus. Hey... Going after Varigan's fist, are you? Yes. Do you need it too? No. I've got mine already. But I'll help you get yours. What a nice person, I thought. What a wonderful, joyous human being. Not thinking much of it, I invited them. And it turns out Mesogis was a level 42 champion of the light. I was in awe of this war horse as he led the charge upon the dead mines. He guided our group from Ironforge to Shadowfang Keep, still one of my favorite dungeons. And as the night ran long, he took me to Black Fathom Deeps for Kord Gem. Along the way, he taught me so much about what it really, really means to be a paladin, to be a hero of the light, and MMO concepts like tanking. I remember him asking me on the way there. Hey, your gear is mostly white. Why? Uh, oh, uh, I wanted to focus on getting my armor higher. <clears throat> At this point, I should reveal to you and the audience that I had been saving every single silver I could to buy white vendor armor from every new vendor that I found in order to bolster my armor amount. I was completely up to date with the armor value that you could get from the white armor from venues, vendors. Mesogus laughed, but then corrected me. <laughs> Listen, little paladin. Greens and blues have bonus stats. That's what's important for gear. That night, I gazed upon Mesogis as if behind them was a brilliant shining star. It was like I had become an apprentice, like I was his squire. Mesogis invited me to his guild, and later my dad would join in his hunter, all taken under the wing of this mighty 42 paladin. Alas, of course, like so many people and everybody listening to this, I was not to be a squire forever. I had at level 30 and was enjoying the dark atmosphere of Duskwood when my dad chipped in. Son. Us both playing the same account is now unworkable. This is my account now. I was devastated. It actually brought me to tears and I pleaded all he said was if you think about it you named your paladin after my old dungeons and dragons character clearly you really did want this paladin to be mine and if you didn't it is mine by namesake what a fucker <laughs> what an absolute fucker that's cold as ice dude that is crude oil in the veins that is rough well, if my son calls his character to preach, I can kind of see where he comes from. I should pre-warn my kids not to do that because I feel I do have a stake. I feel like I have a claim to it. Like, if you got to if, if one of my boys calls their character to preach, that's mine. 
I did get a consolation prize, of course. I was to be given my own fresh account. I had 30 levels of experience under my belt, now on a PvP server, so I had seen where the grass may be greener. Perhaps the paladin was not the right play, because, of course, by level 30, I had heard that, which meant imminent demise. It is now time to become a human rogue, and that is where I would go. We had a lot of fun in those days. My dad eventually formed his own guild, of which an initiation rite was that he we would hunt down a horde player around the level of the initiate and circle them as the would-be recruit would fight them one-on-one. -on -one. It was, in his words, Thunderdome rules. Two men enter, one man leaves. I remember hitting level 40 at my, around my birthday and my dad buying gold so I could afford my first mount. Aww. <laughs> Aww, that's kind of cool. <laughs> There's something nice there. There's so that's kind of there's something nice there. Okay. But I should mention here that my dad kept most of the gold that he bought for himself. He used your birthday as an excuse to buy himself gold. I bet your dad made your account, your character trade the gold seller and then mail himself the gold. So if one of you got banned, it was him. I guarantee fucking tea that's how that went down. I guarantee it. Because back in the day, I bought gold back in the day in order to be able to raid. And you had to go and meet a guy. Like, it wasn't like it arrived in the mailbox. You had to go and meet somebody. I had to go and meet somebody in Ratchet. It was fucking really weird. I didn't like it. It was, it made me feel very icky. Very, very icky. Eventually, we hit the level cap. And while doing 15-man Blackrock Spire runs were okay, we both, of course, craved more. We sought out a raiding guild. Oh, we need a guild name. Oh, I missed that. Sorry. Right, I need a guild name. Classic WoW guild name. Live chat. Our wonderful live audience right here, right now. We need a classic WoW guild name. It'll be called Greg's. Okay, fine. Fine. That's all you're getting, though. I'm just fucking warning you guys. That's all you're getting. And we found this greasy, sweaty, disgusting, awful, salty, oily guild gregs and after trialing with the guild they absorbed our entire guild and we were allowed to raid they were good with them we cleared molten core zulgarob and aq20 we didn't get that far into blackwing lair but it didn't matter now as we raided i want to point out that i was a dumb as fuck kid who had no idea what the fuck i was doing i'm not saying i did really badly but I was nowhere near the best we had. My biggest rival, however, was Alex, a woman in her 30s who also played Rogue. We had a bit of friendly rivalry, admittedly, and we ran a lot of the larger dungeons like Blackrock Spire together, as well as PvP'd and, of course, raided. Now, probably my biggest issue when it came to my subpar DPS was the fact that I had specced my Rogue into fist weapons. Fist web combat fists in classic WoW. We're going combat fists in classic WoW. <laughs> That's a choice. <laughs> now, you're probably asking yourselves, why? Why would I do this? Well, it wasn't because of my kung fu moves or anything like that. No. It is because I had seen the weapons that were my dream weapons. And they were fist weapons. They were the primal blessings two fist weapons from Zulgarub and when they would proc they turned you into a were tiger which is really cool oh good lord <laughs> oh sweet jesus there is not a person in my chat in the elitists the elitists that are here who would ever sacrifice dps in world of warcraft for looks <laughs> there is not a person here you would sacrifice sword spec? Really? <laughs> I only ever got one half of the set. But I say I had so much DKP because I refused to pick up other weapons. Are you sure, dude? You really don't want 
this weapon. You don't want the core hound tooth. Really? You're specking fists. And you don't want the core hound tooth. Because you're saving for fist weapons. That's what I'm hearing. Okay. Okay. The advantage was I was able to get Night Slayer so much faster than everyone else. Fucking rogues chasing Night Slayer and not weapons. Jesus Christ. I had built up so much DKP waiting for my first fist weapon set to drop that I ended up in Molten Core with 7 out of 8 Night Slayer before anybody else had 2 piece. <laughs> One night after we killed Gar, it finally dropped. The piece I was missing. The Night Slayer cover. It was the final one for that big 8 out of 8. I checked the DKP. I am number one with 120 DKP. Second is Alex with 112. We both go all in. I know that I am guaranteed the helmet. To be the first and only rogue in our whole guild who is full Night Slayer. And the cover gets looted to Alex's bag. What? 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 Uh, uh, that helm should have gone to me. I had more points. <clears throat> the loot master. Sorry, kid. I didn't see. Nothing we can do about it now, though. I'm sure we can make it up to you later. The next cover. Well, that's reserved for you. Mike and chat. We killed Gar 16 more times from that day. The Night Slayer cover never dropped. Not one fucking time. Every time we would kill Gar, I would run up and click it. No helmet. And I've got to tell you, resentment. A lot of resentment grew in my heart. To be fair, I killed Anixia for the entirety of vanilla World of Warcraft, every reset, and I never got the Transcendence Helm. Never dropped. <laughs> it never dropped one fucking time. Never dropped. Never saw it. During those days, my dad grew close with the guild and even was promoted to an officer. However, all this attention to World of Warcraft started to become a problem. My dad was investing more and more time. And his marriage was becoming a stress. They spent less and less time together, as if they had off schedules. And the weekends had now been fully booked for raiding and scheduled BGs with the rest of the guild. I recall a story where my mother who worked a closing shift at a pizza chain, came home late at night, and upon coming home, found my dad at his desk on vent with the boys. She said, Hey, I just finished work. Are you coming to bed? His response was, After this conversation. My mum got to thinking, Okay, is there maybe something you want to drink? Yeah, some coffee would be great. My mother got him a coffee. And as the night went on, his speech began to slur until his eventually his mic went silent. He woke up five hours later with his head on his desk in a puddle of his own drool. She had put Ambien in his coffee. I thought that was going to be he had coffee and stayed up all night talking. She fucking drugged your dad. Jesus Christ. What the fuck? God damn. My mother, and unsurprisingly, grew to resent World of Warcraft so, so much. And how much of my father's free time it had taken. Anytime they would get into an argument, his go-to move would be to lock his computer room door and go and play WoW while she screamed outside it. This is getting really dark. <clears throat> Holy shit. Holy shit. This, got, this took a twist. A minute ago, we were upset about Night Slayer covers. 
It got so bad that one time that my mother, admittedly after a few drinks, took a stool to his door and broke both the stool and the entrance to the door. One day, my mother was doing laundry and in the pocket of my dad's jeans, she found a goal exercise from a class my dad was taking for work as part of a promotion. The list said things like things you might expect save x money in my account learn this and that and at the bottom of the list okay it gets darker (laughs) i no offense, author and your sister who apparently both watch this channel. Your father is a fucking dumbass. <laughs> a turbo dumbass. <clears throat> On his personal goal list, it said, save X money in my account, learn this and that. And the very last thing on the list was, move out to live with Alex. My mother was obviously furious. She learned that my dad and Alex have been talking back and forth about leaving their respective partners and running away together. That's right, Preach. Not only had Alex ninjured my Night Slayer cover, but she was trying to ninja my dad from my mother. I mean, she did play a rogue, right? You had to see it coming. You had to see it coming. She is playing a rogue. Like, is there's no such thing as a trustworthy rogue. They just don't exist. They don't. Be wary of anybody who's rocking that rogue. My mother went into online sleuth mode. <clears throat> my mother managed to find Alex's husband and tell him what was happening. Oh my god. Both my father and Alex were confronted, and while I don't know the gritty, I do know that Alex was forced to leave the guild and move to another server. (laughs) Oh no. This really upset me, as she was regularly the person who would do dungeons with me, and it made my stomach turn. My sister has a theory that Alex was also fucking around with the loot master to get gear. I cannot confirm or deny this situation, though. My dad got to stay. Okay. But this is the tale I want to tell you of how me scamming my sister out of $30 and pushing Warcraft almost ruined my parents' marriage. Somehow they're still together to this day. And this isn't even their craziest story. But that story doesn't involve any online gaming. Yeah, I don't think we want that. I think that's going to get really dark. (laughs) Your house is like smashed up, fucking drugging each other. (laughs) And despite my parents seemingly hating each other, as me and my sisters grew up, they somehow seemed closer than ever before. And now the most kids have left the nest. Oh, so it was your fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was definitely your fault. The kids caused too much stress. My dad didn't even quit World of Warcraft. He continued to raid hardcore up until Cataclysm. And to this day, he still logs in every now and again. I would go on to make myself a fresh character on another server in an attempt to step out from my dad's shadow. And as a lore enjoyer who had half their fill of world PvP, I of course rocked up on a paladin on a roleplay server. If you all enjoyed this, I'll put in the work the tale of the biggest RP moment we had on the Horde side during the Burning Crusade. A story of brother fighting brother, betrayal, espionage, and the ring of battle. I hope you enjoyed this tale of my time in Vanilla WoW. And enjoy y'all's day. Take it easy. I mean... What really? We're going with Fall Guys Giga Chad? Carried on playing WoW. I've never cheated on my wife and never will. But if you're going to cheat on your wife, why would you write it down? (laughs) Like you might forget? I don't understand why you would write it down on a piece of paper. (laughs) what is going on there where you're like i need to write this down (laughs) want to get caught subconsciously it does feel that way a little bit right it does feel that way like if you're writing it down 
Oh my god. Brutal. In case he forgot. Oh yeah, reminder. Must cheat on my wife. <laughs> it's important. It's important that I mean I might forget. And I don't want to do that. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Uh we need three guild names. Uh we have requests here. A frost related name. A dark, occult, edgy name, and a pretentious single word name. You're not having Greg's. No, you're not having Greg's. A frost related name. Uh, the Chili Willies. I like that. None of these are dark. The Razors. All right, we'll go with Razors. It's a single word name, sure. Uh, we need an edgy, dark name. The Dark Ones, the Death Cave, Onslaught. No. Dark, dark just a cars? Jesus Christ, yeah. Also, never joining that guild. <clears throat> the dark just a cars, brutal. Okay. Another y'all. Oh, we got Team USA representing today. Good afternoon or evening to y'alls. Uh, we don't. Oh God. <laughs> Preacher and the chat, I want to give you warm greetings from across the pond for I hail from the decorative cowboy on the belt buckle of the Bible Belt in USA, South Carolina. Parentheses, it's really not that bad. Well, in the interest of fairness, what is South Carolina famous for? <laughs> South Carolina is best known for warm temperature and golf. Sick. <laughs> uh, oh, and it does say here, Southern hospitality. Uh, all good. <clears throat> all good. I'm a long time viewer and lurker to all things that you do, Preacher. But before we begin, I would like to thank you for this series. It keeps me entertained throughout my work day and I enjoy every moment. Well, without you, we can't do it. So thank you very much. I have a tale for you. From back during one of the more hated WoW expansions, Cataclysm. Fuck off, man. Cataclysm was great. People who dislike Cataclysm, honestly, I'm going to say it. It's because you were shit at the game. You did, if you didn't like Cataclysm, it's because you were shit at the game. Cataclysm was great. You just couldn't do any fucking dungeons because you don't know how to press kick or stun. You were literally just dog shit at the game. When a boss a boss says, break yourself on my body and puts up a buff that says he's reflecting damage and you kill yourself, it's because you shit at the game. <clears throat> That's what it is. Cataclysm was fucking glorious. Cataclysm was well good. It was sick. Cataclysm was awesome. The only problem with Cata is the raids were all broken. Like the 10-man raids were all broken. Before we dive in, I want to give you some tales, some history, something here. You might see I started World of Warcraft during Vanilla, and I played all the way through to Dragonflight. During the end of Vanilla and into the Burning Crusade, I created, of course, a guild with a group of IRL friends named the Chili Willies. <laughs> we were very close, and primarily focused on, of course, the most hardcore of the hardcore, PvP, mate. That's right. That's right. If you see the chili willies coming, you better fucking move, mate. Yeah? Get out of the way. Get out of the way. I'll fucking do you, mate. Though we were adept raiders when we wanted to be. We stayed together through the Burning Crusade and into Mists of Pandaria. Breaks here and there or swapping to actual hardcore raid guilds to make progress. But I'll tell you about that in a different time. In the beginning of Cataclysm, one of my best friends and I moved our mains out of chili willies and into a real raiding guild. We went hard progression through the bastion of Twilight and Blackwing's descent, but the raid leader ended up being just a giant cunt, so we left. We moved our characters back to our friend's guild of the Chili Willies and handed over leadership to my best friend's younger brother. Though he was younger at this time, he's still like 21. Don't think of him as a little kid. I took a break from the game, came back a bit later, right at the end of Firelands. However... That small guild of 12 close-knit IRL friends that we had formed all those years back was now 450 strong. <laughs> well, did you know Cataclysm brought with it that guild activities filled the guild bank with gold and the guild master could keep that gold? 
And it was very popular at the time for people to just start rando guilds with macros to just suck up every player on the server and just keep all the gold. Uh, it was kind of a big issue. When I used to play, I would log on to see an average roster online of about four people. Now, and I worked third shift during this time, so I could attest to it. Every day online was 75 to 100 people in our guild. The younger brother had quickly become one of the best PvPers on our server. He had obtained Gladiator and made many friends along the way. So they server transferred and joined our guild. And it kind of snowballed into the juggernaut we had become. On our small server, less than 5,000 players about equally distributed across Horde and Alliance existed. And we were pretty much the only Horde PvP guild. So, we accepted everyone. We were casual BG -er once a week. Welcome aboard. We were storm with gate ganker. Come on in. And even some high rated players from the RBG and arena scene. Our guild may not have been, you know, on average, the best of the best. But we were big and we were mighty. And we had a lot of people who liked to hunt down red tags. After I came back, I soon realized that the younger brother had impressed upon his friends and all his recruits of my friends and my own leadership of my leadership and skill in PvP. Of course, they wanted to check me out, see if I was mustard, see if I was everything. I dove straight back into the BG scene with them, and of course, we didn't lose. From BGs, RBGs, Tol Barad, and World PvP, we were undefeated. This primarily was built upon just natural respect all our players had for the leadership of our awesome guild, the Chili Willies. If a call was made, they did it. I was very militaristic in nature. Because of the world PvP, however, we started to become famous, infamous on our server. If any leveling zone or outpost was attacked by the Alliance, our guild soon arrived, usually 50 deep. Our guild mount, the Frostwolf Howler, became the symbol and everyone on the server knew of it. This, of course, leads to some major drama on the release of the Dragon Soul. Now, the top guild on our server at the time was a US top 50 guild called the Razors. No Alliance guild came close to beating them in the race for server first, and it created a heated rivalry. So, for the release of Dragon Soul, one of the officers of Razors Zuzi reached out and asked if my guild would capture Tol Barad and hold it so they could take their mains and alts through Baradin Hold for the free loot so they could get an upper hand on progression. We, of course, acquiesced to this request. As soon as the Dragon Soul loot was available in Baradin Hold, our guild flooded tol barad pvp queue every few hours to get into the battle and hold it for the horde there were countless matches where the entire tol barad instance horde side was just our guild and there we would be all in comms set up into squadrons and divvying out orders some games would actually be close as the guilds fought to claim them back and two of the nodes would be overrun but the final node would never be taken Dubbed by the Alliance on the official WoW forums, our maneuvering Tol, Tol Barad was nicknamed the Wall of Frost. The Chilly Willies would hold the wall. We would all line up in the front of the capture point on our white frost wolves. And because of this obvious dickery, we held Tol Barad for several months. The Alliance only ever, to, ever, ever able to take control around five times during that period. Because of this, us fulfilling the request to Razors, they would bring in our rogues and help them obtain their legendary daggers from the Dragon Soul questline. Not only that, but we began receiving donations from them and other guilds in the form of gems, enchants, and food to maintain the Wall of Frost. Of course, denying the Alliance access to Tolbarad became a problem, apparently. Contentious. Our server forums were on fire, with ally players bitching, moaning, hating on our guild, and just generally talking mad shit. 
I generally didn't care. Until I was specifically called out by a well-known human frost DK named Angry Salad. One could say he was my mirror. He was one of the leaders of an alliance PvP guild on our server named the Dark Justicars. They were primarily duelist and gladiator arena players and warlord high warlord RBGers, though they were quite small, certainly compared to the numbers we could put out. He was a frost DK. <clears throat> he was good at PvP. But unlike me, he had server transferred to Darkspear to get carried to Gladiator like an absolute jizz drinker. <laughs> it was a well-known fact amongst the people who knew. If you knew, you knew. I had only ever reached 2200-ish, but I had done it legitimately. Now preach, I'm not one to rise to insults, but I decided to join in the forum discussion and of course make jokes and such at my own expense and make light of the whole situation. But eventually, Angry Salad called me out specifically and my guild. So I posted the only thing that made sense. All right, mate. Well, if you bitches want Tall Brad so bad, come and fucking get it. Fucking duel me though, right? Duel me. You want it? Come and fucking get it. That weekend, his guild partnered up with a few others to form an actual organized proper group. And when the queue for Tall Brad began, they started spam joining. Unfortunately for them, we kicked their ass. It was close, but they lost. Evidently, they had been talking mad shit, inspiring each other, patting each other on the back about how easy this was going to be. But taking that fat L was the last straw. An hour or so later, someone in Che Chat posted, Uh, guys, there's a lot of alliance outside Orgrimmar. I and a few of my guildies ran out to see what was up, and sure enough, there was Angry Salad, the Dark Juster cards, and about two to three raids worth of players from well-known PvP guilds and PvE guilds alike. A bulletin went out for our guild, and within 10 minutes, we had 60 or so players manning the line. The Wall of Frost was built. Now, obviously, I can do some basic math. We were outnumbered like a motherfucker. But who cares? No one was going to break through the Wall of Frost. About a minute or so after this dick measuring contest amongst WoW nerds, more and more hordes started to arrive. The raiding guilds who had sent us gifts for holding Tol Barad ran out beside us, including Zuzi from the Razors in their full heroic 25 Dragon Soul fucking glory. I am well aware of how like Avengers Endgames it sounds. I'm sorry, but this is how it went fucking down. With this demonstration of support from the rest of the Horde community, I was ready for anything. So I decided to take it full edgelord. I dismounted, put on my RP walk, and started strolling towards Angry Salad. In my brain, I could see the tumbleweeds rolling past. My undead gave him the <laughs> cackle from the slash laugh, and then I threw in a slash pity. <laughs> I was immediately death gripped. I popped all defensives, just waiting to die. All I swarmed in, but I was still alive. I had been hit with every buff, heal, and positive spell you could possibly fucking imagine. And a moment later, the full power of the horde behind me crashed into the alliance. Unfortunately, I can't give you too many details on all what happened because it was just a laggy, stuttering clusterfuck. But in my brain, it was epic as fuck. The whole thing lasted about 45 minutes. We had finally corpse camped and forced the alliance all the way down to the Razor Hill until they didn't come back anymore. It was an overwhelming, staggering victory for the Horde. A phenomenal moment in my WoW career and the most epic roleplay of non-roleplayers you had ever seen. After that, we let them have Tolbarad. The forums quietened down and they knew and they will forever know. And for those people who took part in that battle they still know today that they were completely outclassed. Thank you for listening. Oh, you're just rubbing it in 20 years later. You remember? You remember all those years ago? We're still number one. 
Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you, losers. We're still number one. Thank you for reading my retelling the story, Preacher, for all the entertainment he is. I was still getting a little bit of entertainment. Have a wonderful evening, everyone, and a big cheers to you. Still Giga Chad. Never forget. Never forget. Uh, a good get good one. Okay, we've got one called Purge that's quite short. Okay, let's go up to there. Apparently, it's a right short one. Still better. Still kings. Still walking tall, walking proud. Um, okay, we have Savage. We'll go with Savra. <clears throat> Savra. Uh, we have Treggies. Markbler. That's right. Yes, the tournament of death is after drama time. Yes, sir. It absolutely is. Uh, I th you couldn't do that now. You'd all be phased out. <laughs> it just wouldn't work. Hello, Preacher. And an affectionate bro fist to our beloved chat. Today, I'm coming to you straight from hashtag Team France. Oh, you need to be careful. France has got some abuse this week in the classic hardcore servers. Yeah, I've been a lot of French hate. I don't agree with it. I like our French audience very much. But the, uh, uh, the, uh, the parlez vous have been attacked this week. I think you stand up for your rights, Team France. Uh, what was it called? Da -da -da, the Purge. All the way from Team France. I hope you're all enjoying your day. I want to give you three little mini stories to illustrate. Once again, uh, you read a story of mine called The Purge in 2020. Okay. They're getting cutting edge is a grind. And even when pressed by time and expectations, you still need to be thorough when recruiting players. Passes are definitely not the only factor to take into account big true a little reminder i'm an officer in a guild that hopefully uh this will help make sense of some moments first during castle nathria's zymox progress a reliable raider savage savra in our guild abruptly disappeared without warning one evening leaving us a raider short and quite baffled his absence resonated in our ranks he really wasn't the kind of person who would miss a raid night at least not without a good warning on discord or text this was a raider who, despite his odd humor about dodgy dealings, was always present and added a certain zest to our gameplay. Days became weeks, and I have to say I was really worried. Did he have an accident? Is he all right? Who cares about the progress? Where is he? We had quite grim predictions about what might have happened to him, so we decided to go on a hunt. We will scan newspapers from his area and make sure nothing too dark was happening. We couldn't find a single thing. No car accident involving young people or whatnot. The only dodgy stuff dealing with youngsters was that dude who that got arrested for cocaine and weed trafficking. Not our guy. We had one last resort. A guildmate that knew his brother worked in a shop not too far from where he lived. So he was going to visit him IRL just to make sure that our friend is okay. Thankfully, the brother was there. And when asked about Savage Savra, he answered... Nah, my brother's not coming back anytime soon. He's in prison for cocaine and weed trafficking. <laughs> it turns out that the only newspaper article we found was actually about our guild member. <laughs> Unlucky. Unlucky. Honestly, I would not have dismissed at all somebody being a coke and drug dealer. He was also playing World of Warcraft. That would not have been something I would have just dismissed. Yeah. Wonder if he's out yet. I don't know. If you are, are you reformed? Can I buy some cocaine? One of the two things is true. <clears throat> During our last story, I had, uh, I had asked you about a DPS whore that we had had, and I wasn't sure how to deal with him. Well, here's how it all went down. During Nathria Progress... There was another raider called Treggies, who was quite good at dealing damage, but he couldn't dodge more than 30% of boss AoEs. Obviously, when a player just can't live, we had to bench him for the last two bosses. But we still decided to bring him in for Sludge Fist, where we were struggling for damage. <clears throat> now, to give you an idea of our boy's personality... In the middle of one of our raid nights, and we raided late, about 11.30pm, 
The raid leader receives a message in the pink saying that if we didn't kill Sludgevist within the next 60 minutes, he would not show up for the next raid because he had a trial with a different team. I mean, you just kick him immediately, right? Yeah, like, that's just an immediate kick. Like, <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> exactly, yeah, just fucking go. Are you joking? You're not holding the whole team hostage with your bullshit? Fuck that. Our raid leader lost his fucking shit immediately. From 0 to 50 straight away. I unmuted the mic from Discord and begged him to fuck off right now. I will not have another pull with that kind of bullshit in our team. So we all sat there silently in front of Sludge Fist. The 19 of us. The raid leader then piped up to break the silence. Admittedly, guys, I lost my cool. <laughs> Sorry. But then he posted a screenshot of the whisper to everyone and they reassured me that a reaction was quite appropriate. <laughs> the moral, yeah. <laughs> the round must have been shot. Not really. That, that's a good story and a laugh. Like, if you got to finish a raid night early because of something like that, who fucking cares? That's really funny. During Vault of the Incarnates, we recruited two players who were friends. Mark Blur and Terrain. We began raiding peacefully together. After a while, we noticed that Mark Blur wasn't always very focused during our raids. His friend Terrain betrayed him and told us that while we were raiding, he was watching the MDI and thought that was more important than our raid. We finally managed to defeat a boss altogether and then we got to Razageth. And there, on Mark Blur's Twitch stream, we saw a guy who was happily making fun of us and saying we didn't have the DPS to deserve to even try Mythic. And except of instead of defending his mates, Mark Burt agreed that our guild was shit. Why, why would you do that on a stream? What are you doing? What are you fucking doing? So dumb. Just so fucking mindlessly stupid. Is to be shit talking people, your own guild, while you're streaming. The two of them on their stream were laughing about us, watching us struggle on this hard boss. So, of course, we decided to kick Mark Blur. Terrain was okay with the decision. He was disappointed that his friend turned out to be such a jerk and wanted to continue to do progress with us. Except, the very next night, we noticed that all the people from Mark Blur's stream who were making fun of us were now in Terrain's stream and Terrain was so excited to have more than one viewer that he joined in shitting on us. <sighs> this is it. My Twitch career is taking off. I'm just going to join in. I'm going to roll with it. Yeah, dude. The guild is well shit. Woo. <laughs> we said nothing. In officer chat, we decided not to remove terrain despite what he was doing because we wouldn't have enough players to raid. Of course, word got out that terrain, uh, about what terrain had done to terrain. Terrain even then went on to tell me in a cold manner that the reason he was mocking us is that he agreed we didn't have the DPS to deal with Razageth. <laughs> and that while it seemed like he was mocking us, he was trying to help us by saying that our DPS was bad. <laughs> no, no, you misunderstand. I wasn't calling you all shit. What I'm saying is that we don't do enough damage. Okay, I'm actually trying to be your friend here. I'm being your friend. Listen to me. Look, <laughs> it's just that you're... It's, I'm not saying that we can't do it. I'm just saying that we can't do it. That's all. I explained to him that pushing DPS takes time. People are learning what to do. You have to be comfortable when dealing with heavy mechanics of phase one. There's a lot of movement and stuff. DPS will increase over time. 
it's not a yes or no answer. Some classes have long cast times, for instance, and your optimizing can take time. He answered very matter of factly to that. I don't think that's right. I've got my entire rotation in like three pulls. To which I said to him, but you're playing a BM hunter. You fucking clown. <laughs> Can you imagine getting called out by a BM hunter about rotations? It's not that much movement. It's fine. At one point, we got one or two new players in and thought, next mistake, finally we can, uh, or next fuck up, we can get this terrain guy out. Terrain, in the meantime, not aware of our intentions, decided he would take it upon himself on recommendation of his Twitch chat, which was now averaging seven viewers, to the GM. Excuse me, Mr. GM. I wanted to tell you that I'm starting to find our time really long on Razageth, especially after last night. You'll tell me it's probably the case for a number of players, including you, and it bothers me. First, because I think you, as the GM, are doing a great job. It's a little too much for my taste, honestly. Announcing who should get spot healed during bombs, for example, I think is excessive noise on comms. And then because you've trusted me and given me good gear that could have gone to other players. But we're at 200 plus pulls. And I really feel, given where we're at, it's going to be five to 600 at this rate. I had already told people when we discussed Mark Blizz case that I was being patient, which was when we were around 70, 80 pulls for phase one, which for a player like me is already quite a lot. Whatever you say the reasons are. Now, I have to be honest with you. If I don't see any improvement on Tuesday, if we don't see, say, any Phase 2 or Phase 2, 8 out of 9 players alive doesn't count, I want clean into Phase 2. And if people don't start to play seriously, I don't think I can continue. Anyway, I don't want to add more as I'm only trying to help and let you know how probably other members of the team are feeling. Thank you. Well... Well, I mean, what a gracious, gracious person. What an absolute, I mean, caring, considerate, trying to help everyone out. Of course, ter Terrain was already in our crosshair and we decided to shoot him out of a cannon immediately and he was removed from the guild. After he was kicked from the guild, Terrain sent yet another message. Mr. GM. I'm honestly not sure what has happened here or whether it is a mistake. I've been removed from the guild and I just don't understand why. As one of the only players who is seemingly trying to help improve the team, what sense does it make to remove me? If this has just been a simple mistake, then I await to be re-invited. Thank you. Well... It just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it just makes no goddamn sense. Why would you remove me? He's still waiting, yeah. He started looking for a new guild, but cried on his WoW Progress bio about being kicked for being too good for our guild. And our guild being unable to accept criticism. When he confronted another officer with our decision, we explained that his attitude was fucking poison and we can't progress with that atmosphere in the raid. He then said, I will warn oh, um, I will warn all you future raiders that you'll finish the raid five days before the next patch and spend countless hours staring at a low damage meter. On our side, of course, it was joy and laughter because he looked like a fucking clown shoes. And we made a best of video where we made fun of him a little. We had a clip of him on Senarth with his char going around in circles, being out of control. And it was definitely a bug. But with some digging around, we learned that the bug only appears if you mouse click your spells. Is that true? That's what happened to me in the cave today. That's what happened. And I got stuck and confused because the chat made me click. That's what, that makes a lot of sense now. 
That makes total sense. That's exactly what happened. Since then, though, I'm still the target of his mess. To this day, he still whispers me while I'm raiding about waiting for another invite. But honestly, I just love his tears and refuse to block him. It's just the icing on the cake of his little story. Thank you for listening to my little mini stories. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. And we will, my friend. We absolutely will. And thank you all for sending your stories in for this week's drama. We're heading back into WoW Classic. This was awesome. And we have Skull Rock to defeat. Because we have under two hours. Under two hours. Before the Tournament of Death begins.